following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. A very good evening and you're joining us on another episode on Gen XYZ. And as you all know, this is a program where we talk about youth related issues or topics. And uh, on this program, we're going to talk about the sport hockey how the sport uh, how youth has been engaging with the sport throughout and what hockey means as a sport here in sri lanka the avenues available for the students who are the sportsmen here in sri lanka for the sport hockey and also you all might be knowing that uh, we have a colombo hockey association here in sri lanka and which is the oldest and the largest hockey association so we have a few gentlemen here who have been life members of this association and uh, i would like to also introduce you to Mr. Damit Silva, Damit Silva, who is the president of uh, CHA as well and he will be giving a small introduction to the gentleman here today as well. Thank you Mr. Damit. Thank you Shanali and the TV Derana24 uh, for having us. Uh, uh, we are actually proud to be here and this is a historic moment uh, not only for Colombo hockey, I think even for Sri Lanka hockey as well and for me personally it gives me great pleasure and privilege and I'm honored to be with these three gentlemen here who are life members of Colombo Hockey. But they have done, they have reached the pinnacle of uh, game in different level. Uh, I'll quickly introduce uh, one by one uh, Mr. Jampati Pereira, who is uh, the Sri Lanka's only Olympic compare. I think this is something that uh, we, as a Colombo Hockey we are very proud of. And also he actually uh, went to 23rd Olympic Games in Los Angeles, USA, and he umpired some of the critical games, main games such as German versus USA, Malaysia versus USA, Australia versus India, Britain versus Pakistan, and Spain versus Holland. And also, he has umpired even the India versus Pakistan match. And apart from that, I think he participated in many international tournaments. I will not have much time, but let me highlight some of the key achievements of uh, his illustrator's career. Ninth Asian Games in New Delhi, and three matches he umpired, including same finals. And also 10th Asian Games in South Korea. Uh, he also umpired their four matches, including finals, Pakistan versus South Korea. And he, as a player, he represented Sri FC, one of the elite clubs, hockey clubs in Sri Lanka and also have luck uh, sports club in the A division tournament. He's a product of uh, Matale St. Thomas's College and also he was, uh, he held positions of vice president and also a secretary and the chairman of umpires committee and even the tournament director, tournament director in numerous tournaments under Sri Lanka Hockey Federation. So we are glad Mr. Jampati Perera is here with us today. I'll, next, I'll go to Mr. Dennis Rosairo. Unfortunately, Dennis is not here with us, but as you can see, he's the one gentleman uh, who has published a book uh, called, uh, Just Call Me Dennis. Probably we can uh, go through that later. But with regards to Dennis, I think CHA was formed, as you correctly said, this is the oldest hockey association. We, uh, this was formed in 1955. So Mr. Rosairo, he's actually, he was in the first uh, team uh, that was played uh, uh, under CHA uh, in this 1955, in 1955. And he represented CHA from 1955 to 1978. Of course, he uh, played uh, Sri Lanka, then Ceylon team toward uh, many countries. And also, incidentally, he was a member, from, committee member of CHA from 1965 to 1971. And he was a secretary from 1971 to 73, and also functioned as a selector. Mercantile Hockey Association. He, he is known as father of Mercantile Hockey as well, though we are talking about Colombo. I cannot uh, forget to mention that because he has been the president of Mercantile Hockey Federation for 30 years. 
And of course, he played some of the best games versus India, against India, Great Britain, Pakistan, and of course, against Indian Olympic team. And he represented Sri Lanka as a judge in 1919 Singapore. And he was one of the national selectors and also chef de mission in Sri Lanka hockey contingent for fifth Asian Cup in Malaysia. So he's another legend in uh, hockey. Next, I'll go to Mr. Rohan Dizanayake, who's seated next to me. Uh, Mr. Dizanayake is actually uh, mainly uh, focusing on the coaching side. He's one of the best coaches that Sri Lanka has produced. He was the assistant national coach men's team 1995 to 1998. And he was the Columbus District Hockey Team Coach from 1999 to 1998 and also 2004 to 2010. He coached Sri Lanka women's hockey team uh, for many international tournaments, including Asia Cup and some of the other tournaments. And more importantly, though he hailed from St. Peter's College, he coached uh, Royal College Columbus 7 for over three decades. I think that is one of the... He, uh, the probably the records in Sri Lankan uh, coaching history in hockey. And also he has uh, coached under 21 girls team, which actually won silver medal at the HF Cup tournament, which was held in Bangkok in 2011. And also he coached Sri Lanka women's team that took part in the World League tournament in Malaysia. So there are many achievements probably, I'm sure they will also touch some of these things. Uh, one thing I need to mention now, uh, the. Though he's coming from his forte, he's coaching, but as well as he's currently acting as a general manager of human, for human resources at Certi Sri Lanka, one of the largest private companies in Sri Lanka. Next, I'll move on to Mr. Manjula Vijayman, the gentleman over there. He's, he has made history in different ways. A product of Ananda College, Colombo, represented both junior and senior levels in Colombo. And of course, he was awarded college colors, Sri Lanka school colors. He was in the junior uh, Sri Lanka, represented junior Sri Lanka team. And of course, he was in the Sri Lanka senior pool from 1984 to 86. And more importantly, he played uh, for CRNFC. And he, in fact, he not only played for CRNFC and all Anandians, but he captained both teams. And he made a history. He was the president of Columbia Che as well as he was the president of a mercantile hockey association. So currently he is the only one who has, uh, who has become a president of both these uh, the unique associations in hockey. Uh, and also I think uh, he started his professional career at Singer and then elevated into from a marketing person to uh, the marketing manager to deputy general manager to general manager and executive director and also finally he was the senior vice president at Browns from 2013 to 2018. Then he became an entrepreneur and he's currently CEO of and managing director of another company. So if you really see, uh, now these three gentlemen have excelled in, I would say, coaching, umpiring, and administrator, administration side. Uh, so I think uh, this is, uh, we are very proud. I'm, as a president, I'm very proud because they're always uh, there to support Colombo Hockey and also giving advices not only to me as a president, but to my uh, all office bearers and even the council members. All right. Thank you for that introduction. And it's great to hear that all of you all have reached that pinnacle in the sport and you all have reached a great height as well. And uh, to start off our discussion, like even before the recording, you all have been sharing some amazing stories about your journey, about the incidents that you all went through as a coach, as a player, as administratives. So. I want to know more about all of this and I'm pretty sure that you know our viewers are waiting to hear about this as well but before we start tell me what hockey means to you all what your passion was why do you love hockey so much yes we can share your ideas here Mr. Rohan if you can start yeah. uh, when you uh, take the sports you know that is played you know all over like you know the cricket rug and so much of you know uh, children are interested in those games so but again now when i started actually my i started hockey because of my sister she played for holy family convent bumble pt and 
because of only I started hockey, I, I was curious because in the hockey stick you can play with only one side. So I was watching when she was going, how she is taking the ball, like you know, various way dribbling and all. Then only I realized, you know, it's art, it's a skill, very good skill involved in that. So with that skill and you know, I mean, the way it was happening, I, I thought something new. This, no, something similar to football, but the ball is being carried by a stick and uh, it was interesting. So, I uh, got a liking to that game and when I started practicing and you know, improving the skills, you know, the passion was there so much because it's a completely new new sport altogether. Like, you know, at home we, play, we used to play cricket, we used to play football, but hockey was something new altogether, a new sport like that. So. So I got aligned to that uh, uh, area and you know the passion took me forward and I never looked back. So from there on I started my career and you know ended up where I am today. Alright, so Mr. Manjula would you have to agree with him or do you have a different experience in the sport? Uh, more or less similar actually I, I, I went to I went to Ananda College and how I uh, became a hockey player is more or less I would say one of my cousins brought me to the hockey field and then I started there from Ananda College and then uh, uh, actually me and Rohan both played together actually Ananda College, Nalanda and then St. Peter's and then Royal also uh, practiced at CRNFC grounds. So we all colleagues of uh, same club I would say same era and then uh, even I, I quite agree with uh, Rohan uh, when you compare the sports hockey is a game that you need a lot of skill skill in terms of focus uh, towards uh, the ball throughout the game and then all 22 players are much focused and much aggressively actively playing uh, in a, in within a one hour so that intensity of the game is very high and then the mental and physical involvement is very high so that the game only plays for one one hour plus so that uh, it's easily easily uh, practically uh, played for any any school, any any company, any mercantile, any sector, but not like a game such will take for a long time, like cricket or so. And then, the, as a as a game, uh, it's a team game where the eleven has to get together and uh, play against the other eleven. So uh, it gives a lot of uh, mental and physical involvement and a development as a to a, a schoolboy, a youngster for him to build a career, uh, for him to uh, kind of get more engaged in his career. So it's very much uh, uh, interesting game, I would say, like football, but uh, totally played in a different way. All right. So moving on to Mr. Jayampati. Now you are the most senior person here and you've got great respect to Sri Lanka and you've been umpiring Olympics also for the sport hockey. So tell me, what your experience was at that time and how can you describe the popularity of the sport now in Sri Lanka compared to when you were playing? And at that day, initially, I studied from St. Thomas College, Marseille and graduated to Colombo. How I started umpiring after playing, then I started umpiring by watching my senior umpires like Mrs. Walt Jaisur here, Barney Bourbon, Willie Moses, and uh, they were we would, uh, they were doing all the final matches. So I was watching them, and I learned a lot from them. That is how I graduated. And when I was selected to do uh, Colombo matches, I gradually they um, got myself improved and uh, commit myself a lot by. Doing, doing up the FIH umpire's rule book. That rule book I had under my pillow every night and I used to go through the interpretation and the application of the rule. That is how I graduated and my first break was Junior World Cup in Malaysia 1977 where I, was, I stayed with the team and gradually the organizing said the umpires can't stay with the team, you have to stay outside. So I was taken to a hotel. From there, 
they they were they were trying to try me out. They have never heard of umpire from Sri Lanka mm. doing an international yeah. match. <laughs> so they gave me a, a very weak match, and uh, I can't remember what the match was. It was very very uh, very weak team, and uh, they were surprised that I reached my miracle, and I satisfied the two international great umpires who have been the technical delegate for that tournament. And immediately they called me up and said, how come uh, your team is not performing well and you have been qualified to do uh, and, and we are trying to promote you to do the fi final matches. And uh, invariably they gave me three matches and in the finals, what happened was the two teams that was, uh, I might remember, it was Pakistan versus Malaysia. Then the earlier, the two team captains and the team management uh, wished to uh, object to the umpires because they, they had the option to uh, qualify to get the two umpires, neutral umpires. Then they selected me to do the finals and they were all that both teams agreed on my name and uh, uh, when they compared the other umpires they all objected then they have no alternative we have to get the neutral technical delegate and out of the two technical delegates, one was Asian, other one was European. And uh, management decided to select the Bel Belgium umpire to do that is the first time a technical delegate was by co-umpire in the finals. That is how uh, I got my international class, international, first international then they qualified, I had to do four, more matches involving Asian countries, within the Asian countries. So there I was invited for the Malaysia, India and uh, Pakistan. That is amazing, Mr. Jayampati, like to bring that great honour, like going through that rocky road for you to get there and bringing that name to Sri Lanka also. And I'm honoured to have you on our programme as well. Thank you so much for sharing that ideas. So we have more to talk about. We have more stories to share about and about the opportunities available for the young people with regard to the sport hockey as well. But before that, we have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we have been talking about hockey as a sport and we have gentlemen here who represent the uh, sport in a very big way and we have a Sri Lankan umpire also who has been representing said in the Olympics as well and we've known about their profiles in the first uh, segment as well. Now we are going to move on into the popularity of the sport here. Now, as you all described earlier, the prominence for the sport was given a little bit uh, more priority in the past. But how has the sport developed over the years and right now, where is the sport? How do you describe the interest of children or anybody who wants to join the sport, the avenues available? So, share your ideas on that. Um, yes, uh, I would say the interest towards the sport has uh, grown tremendously over the past decade or so, especially the, so much of uh, uh, school children, especially bo both boys and girls uh, take into the sport and so many schools have started playing hockey now. As a result, you know, even the Colombo Colombo Association, the the pioneer association of the country, we had two major tournaments, that's the Andrew Shield and the Pioneer Shield. That's for A Division and B Division. Why I'm telling this, uh, the interest is, now we have 
got division C plus uh, division D also. So much of teams have taken up to this uh, game. So because that, they, I I would say the school level there's a big, very big enthusiasm and interest towards this sport. What I see is actually, uh, as Rohan said, that is the interest has grown among the school uh, girls and boys, but the continuity of the game going into club level and continuing further uh, and then once you finish your career, playing career, you need to join in terms of coaching, either uh, umpiring or administration. So we need young youth to uh, continue with the game and then uh, you can learn so much because uh, for us during our time, uh, even during uh, it's the hockey is all for us. We've played few games, but still hockey is everything for us. Actually, we, I got my first job from hockey. I was never thinking of working, but uh, I was given the opportunity because of a hockey player. And then uh, even uh, after completing my uh, playing, playing uh, era, I would say, and then get into administration and I enjoyed so much and I learned so much in terms of managing peers, managing different level of people, uh, because in an organization, you are all our employees. So you manage in a different way. But here, all are sportsmen. So you are equal in terms of sports. But you have different levels of education, different levels of experience, different levels of exposure to all the people. Uh, not all are equal. But in terms of managing, it's a huge experience. Where I actually, I learned a lot and uh, developed myself in terms of my uh, how uh, management and then I applied everything I have learned to my work career and then now as my uh, managing my own company managing you know name it from top to bottom it's very much interesting the things that I have learned from the game I would say yeah there's a lot of things that you can say that you can learn from just engaging in a sport per se but uh, why do you think uh, people are reluctant to continue sports here in Sri Lanka because a lot of people say like yeah I just continue did my sport did hockey did basketball whatever sport in school only after that uh, I gave up I just couldn't find the right platform so what are the challenges you think we have at the moment to pursue a career or even a part-time career in sports uh. Especially when you say sport, of course, sport in Sri Lanka, like you know, certain sports are categorized as, the, as a professional sports. So because of that, from the small days itself, the parents are you know pursuing on those particular sports in Sri Lanka. So in Sri Lanka, I would say in Sri Lanka, so they know there is a career waiting for them in the professional field if you pursue in that particular sport, but not all the sports have that facility and the glamour that uh, carries for. Sponsorships. Involved. So, sponsorships comes a bigger role. The, some of the sports doesn't get any sponsorship. So, because of that, uh, the the future, the players uh, look at their future in a different angle. Okay, in a not on the sporting angle, but on academics and other experiences, so they they, they can move forward in life. So, sports is a, like an extracurricular activity, uh, like in school level. Then after school level, it drops off. And uh, people go in the uh, in search of their uh, other careers other than the sport. But some sport, of course, definitely are professional. So they move on with that sport and they pursue in that career in the sport itself. I think this is where the mercantile sector can actually come and support in a big way. For example, almost all of us, especially three of us, were recruited. Uh, we didn't apply for jobs, right? So then, when we played hockey. Uh, automatically, the, the our mercantile sector, many organizations to pick uh, boys and girls. I think that trend has probably diminished a bit, but I think this is where probably we can uh, play a huge role as corporate so that uh, the not only for the game of hockey, but even for other sports rather than the one or two elite sports, the, the, the children, the boys and girls will continue to play that game because they know their future is also secured. Mm -hmm. So right now, as you all mentioned, uh, that trend is diminishing where corporates also give less prominence to people who have uh, played sports, especially in schools because even in parents' minds, they have that exactly. mindset, okay, no, you have to do your academics. So until exams are over, you can't, you're not allowed to go for practices. So same in mercantile, I feel like, you know, 
people have lost interest in giving prominence to sport because they have other uh, problems to worry about at the moment, especially with the economic crisis which is uh, taking in place. So, uh, Manjula, uh, Mr. Manjula, what, you can, what can you describe about this trend and what do you think mercantiles or private organizations or associations like uh, CHA can do in order to promote hockey? Actually, those days, uh, uh, lots of opportunities were given to sportsmen. Actually, sportsmen, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier also, they are geared to serve any, any uh, place in the structure of an organization. In term, they are very fit in terms of physically and mentally, in terms of working with the people, get work, get work done from people. So that is more important. I think uh, you need to inculcate this as a culture in organization. This is how actually organization cultures are built those days. Actually we lack, currently we lack that culture because people go for more academic, students go for more academic, uh, academic career than the sports career. But I think this has to be balanced so much and then the, the gain, the students are the gain, they, they will gain. Because when you, when you are doing sports, the things that you can learn, things that you can develop within yourself is immense because you will realize those things when you when you come to a certain level of your career you look back to your career oh my god these things i have gone through in my sports career uh, and when we come to this level and the uh, people whom we are talking we have played together and i remember when i was schooling when i was uh, playing for my school team jayambati was blowing our matches far different different levels but today we are sitting together in one administration table and uh, administering the game. So this is how we actually, we current in the modern terms, we talk about networking, right? So this is automatically happens during our times, but the, the platform is sports. Right? And when we had casual chat, uh, Mr. Manjula mentioned about the agility. I think the one of the, the best things it's a that- crucial thing. Crucial actually. things, yeah. If you recruit a sportsman, you know, you get the, that agile people because we are in agile, we are in a disruptive, we are in a very uh, tough environment. So you need such people to manage those situations and I can't think of better people than sports yeah. men and women. Definitely, especially on that because being HR specialist, like you know, because I see that he Man Manju spoke about the culture, workplace culture plays a bigger role in the productivity and you know, the, uh, the way forward for the company. So being HR uh, special, I have noticed like the people uh, who face the interviews also, if they are sportsmen, they face the interview very well and they know the teamwork, they blend with the team and they go towards the object, they go towards their goal in the proper way, they have the time, time management, the, all the skills are there and especially in anything you have to have the skills, knowledge and the attitude. Attitude plays a bigger role. But the sports people's attitude is very much different than the people who are only on academics. So this actually I have told even in, when I'm coaching the school level, I've told the parents have taken into account like, you know, they, they have a lot of confidence about the personality development. Like, you know, as I said, we may, the hockey may not carry you as a professional uh, in, the, in that particular sport, but the things that you learn from this game, being with the players, the leadership, the confidence, the respect you uh, give to each another. So much of things are involved uh, in this uh, game. So that carries you forward. That sometimes carries you forward then more than a professional sportsman goes forward. So in their uh, respective career. So I mean, there are ample examples, you know, even Damita, you know, he has been a top class hockey player there. Now he is, you know, one of the leading uh, personalities in the bank. So. There are many experiences like that. So what I'm telling is the children, like, you know, maybe you may not have a professional status in this particular sport, but if you get involved in the sport, your career is secured, that, so that definitely you will reach a better position in life as a, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, what Taxi parents game. has to see is the mental agility. Mm -hmm. So this is very important in today's context because uh, you see that uh, suicide rates are going up. So this is where the youngsters lacking mental agility. Sometimes they can't sustain the defeat. You fail in exam, they can't sustain. But uh, you take a sportsman, they are geared to do anything. They are geared to sustain anything. Win or lose. We say win or lose, 
you we do a sports so that we learn both so you need to learn both so this is very very important uh, so i feel all the youngsters should balance balance out and then importantly i see uh, lots of uh, career career men or women so they work very hard the extended hours not like those days and then go they they go for they they will they will reserve a special time for gym during our time gym is our ground we don't go specially for gym so gym is over there when playing playing will give you the mental satisfaction physical physical fitness the mental fitness fitness everything together so when you go to a gym you have an objective either weight loss or to be uh, you your body you decide decide to have some certain body level so that you want to pressure it. i would say huh? another pressure that's the pressure, pressure. <laughs> stress i would stress. say right going to a gym is a more or less stress it's not a game there but whereas we go to a ground and play together 11 players are playing together sharing each other different skill levels not all are equal so i i may be good in one skill but other person may be good in different skills so those skill to be joined together blend together to produce a team effort so this is very important this is where we see in lots of organization the team effort is lacking so sports is a very much easy platform and i would say it's a great leveler so it's a great leveler sports is a great leveler you put all the levels together Right. Definitely, I would definitely agree with you, uh, because like I was also a sports person, and all I can also relate to whatever you're saying because I love the activities we did as a team, and you enjoy doing a sport. But right now, in the current context, everything has become a rat race. Like okay. in the yes. parents' eyes, yes. also like parents want their children to be successful in every single way. So even for children who are joining a sport. sometimes they are being pressured by their parents you know to know you have to do your best mm. they are pushing them yeah. to go for practice even if they don't want to and uh, since you all are coaches as well how can you describe the encouragement from schools for children to join sports and uh, what are the challenges there at the moment because in terms of facilities and in terms of opportunities available in tournament wise yeah school level of course almost all the schools have about uh, more than 15 to 20 sports so and also uh, the education ministry itself they have uh, put a ruling each sport each student has to do at least one sport so there is a bit of push for children to do the sport but only a problem is that the parents parents are on more academic side and they will be thinking okay if you do this sport the academy uh, aspiration may not be uh, fulfilled so that that uh, fear is there uh, within the parents but to tell you frankly like you know uh, if you even if you have this academics if you don't have a balance in you know uh, with the sport and other things you can't pursue in your life that's what i felt that's what i experienced uh, during my coaching career and uh, it has come to a level that uh, Uh, some parents now at the beginning at the beginning the parents were sending their children just for the medal and the certificate correct only for that they they use all to get the their record book signed uh, to say that so That's that right. they can yeah. apply for prefect ship but that trend we we managed to change we managed to train, uh, ch- uh, change that trend so and at the end you know they realize okay uh, the personality development and how the, they move with the others interaction with the others that is important because some some families like you know mother and father both uh, go to work the child is all alone at home so they they don't interact except on uh, social media and other things so this is another platform like the sports platform take all of them away from their uh, that uh, segment and you know be with the other same age uh, children and enjoy life in a better way i would say key other challenge thing, would be sorry key yeah, challenge other thing i would be, say you mentioned the successful how you measure the successful uh, differs a lot it does the success uh, measured with your performance with your own performance so the competition you mentioned the competi- competition so are you competing with somebody else or you competing with yourself you need to compete with yourself every day day in day out 
you need to be better than yesterday you need to uh, indulge yourself with more skills more development your knowledge so it's so much available freely not like those days when we were there it's just a click of a button all the knowledge is available so it's the competition is you the successful how you are successful measured by yourself you you should not compare with yourself somebody else is having more academic qualification i have only this success is not that success is i, I would say for me uh, how mentally agile to yourself uh, to do any kind of work uh, whether you are fit to join any organization any forum uh, that's the most important thing for me actually i was uh, when i started the professional examinations uh after some time so that i need to join with certain uh, uh younger younger generation uh, honestly they couldn't uh, find the gap because i am more or less more or less like them so that's the agility mental agility that you can fit into any place any forum any culture so that's the platform is given by sports i i strongly believe in that okay Thank you for sharing your ideas but we have to cut into a short commercial break we'll be back soon you're watching Gen XYZ Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and we have been talking about the sport hockey and how what the opportunities are available out there for the people who are interested in the sport as well. So, Mr. Jayanthi, I want to ask you now. You've been creating pinnacles here in Sri Lanka and representing Sri Lanka internationally. Also, what is the most memorable uh, incident that you have with you? Yeah, you know, prior to coming on to this, I'd like to. confirm what uh, rohan and manjula said about uh, hockey improvement in schools level what i see is the physical fitness and also the lack of ground facilities now supposing if a school team wants to play a friendly game or practice game you can't find a field uh, that that is lacking in sri lanka now We are we are having only few hockey grounds, and we have moreover the facilities getting for the so value of a hockey stick is more than ten thousand rupees, and hockey ball is about three thousand five hundred to four thousand rupees. So the schools are unable to uh, meet the expenses, even the principals. That has to be touched upon. and also physically they are not fit and have to have a witness the trainer to be trained by uh, uh, coaches and the physical trainers when i come to olympic games it was a very fantastic moment we had 16 teams selected for the olympic games out of which uh, there were 20 umpires 20 umpires none from Asian countries, except myself, and umpire from Japan, one Sakaida, and the boy. We had a very great winner because they are also when it go to umpiring, when they look at my stature, and when you compare to European umpires, they are height and weight, and they have been very popular in the standards. So. I was very fortunate to be selected for the Asian Games. Before that, I would compare the, the tournaments that I played. Umpired in the uh, Aslam Shah tournaments and also the other international matches. Thereby, the technical delegates have been watching my performance. right throughout before selecting for the olympic games and same thing with the london world cup same thing happened we are the tactical delegate tested me in matches at malaysia aslam shah tournament we had the 
three uh, three years we had consecutively a slam shot tournament there the world umpires committee members were present and they were satisfied my performance met with their requirement and they selected me that's amazing to hear and it's nice to hear stories from a senior person as well because he has made remarkable uh, marks here in sri lanka and we are proud to know that you know a person like this is representing a sport here in uh, hockey as well so thank you for your contribution as well and I, it's again my honor to be speaking to Chinali, you really thanks to you because actually even i am hearing uh, some of these uh, stories <laughs> uh, thanks to you and the team and uh, something very important that he mentioned was you know the facilities available yes. here in sri lanka yes. challenges that you have yes so huge issue in terms of taking younger younger players uh, so i i would say all the schools should have a mini turf mm. because we are playing the game in a different level we are not using the normal grass courts so the all those challenges are there for young members to get involved with the game and when you see the school when you have a small pitch turf when they see it, they will be enthusiastic to come and play there when they see some small players are playing it's a wonderful thing if we can have it but i know for fact that there are so many challenges faced by the schools as well definitely so tell me what has uh, cha been up to in terms of creating these opportunities for the players yes creating opportunities for players uh, we are looking we have a, a development committee so they are looking at uh, this in a uh, few folds for example not only the players but we are also looking at the coaches and umpiring when it comes to players we have uh, we are now focusing more on the school players as well because that is where the pipeline because they will become the club player so that is why as mr zanak mentioned we have uh, now open c and d divisions for them and then we are also grooming them we are having coaching camps we are having academics for example junior nationals or senior nationals we always have practices and the uh, trials or the selections earlier and the colombo ha of course we have the most uh, formidable team my selection committee is uh, basically all three members are ex sri lanka national players and even in my vps i have two uh, national players so it's a, it's a very dynamic team we have so through them we actually even the national umpires committee chairman even from the colombo ha so with him and the other member support we support coaching because some of the players as uh, both of the gentlemen mentioned they they aspire to become coaches they aspire to become players uh, the the umpires so we we support that uh, route from colombo ha but i must mention Though we are the largest, we are also facing these uh, ground challenges. We have uh, 38 teams participating. Six, seven hundred uh, players are participating in this tournament with 137 matches. So, Colombo at the moment we have only two. As what we had two turfs, Matale and Colombo. Colombo one is also damaged. Matale one was removed few years ago. Now even Colombo, we are finding it to very difficult to have tournaments uh, in this uh, environment. All right. Now, when we talk about the sport, also fair play is something that we need to talk about. You know, people sometimes do it for competition, and you know, people don't know the rules about it. Sometimes when you're playing the game, you forget about the rules because no, I'm doing this to win. It doesn't matter if it's a foul or anything. You know, that that competition is there. So, as a coach, how do you train? people to have a uh, fair play in built within them because i remember before the program also uh, mr manjula and mr han were talking about how both of you even though we are sitting in the same platform here you all had to one time rival each other yeah yeah so that's how the did same you club. in the same club. same club yeah. yeah we represent the same club again we re represent the same district and that particular year he was captain in the colombo reds team and i was captain in the colombo blues team you know because we never wanted to lose that was a thing Ult ultimately you know we 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 had a big like you know clash in the sense clash in the sense in a competitive way now it's because and of the enthusiasm we never want to <laughs> clash <laughs> is not a fight but, fight, but yeah. we yeah. want to bow down to each other ultimately we our match ended in a draw because of that draw some other district won the championship <laughs> so that was a, a thing at that time so what what you mentioned was uh, the sportsmanship this is the thing that has to be you know not the players are responsible for that it's the coaches that, that are responsible you know even when you see the now present days raga matches 
the players are okay. Player, it's, it's the spectators that you know create all the issues. Though maybe the old boys or things like that. But the players are united. They meet each other. Now recently, I saw a very nice gesture by the Josephine Raga team at a funeral of a Isipatana player's mother. I mean, that is the culture that should. That's that's the that, sport. That's where, that is the sport is all about. But the coaches, coaches for their their survival. They make the children the scapegoat, like you know, they they won't win at any any cost. That is a problem. So I put the blame hundred percent on the coaches. I have a good example. Uh, it's kind of a you know uh, hilarious one also. You know, he, we used to be coached by Mr. Disanayake. There were days many years ago, even having won some matches, right? Uh, we were punished. Hilarious <laughs> you know, punishment. Eleven rounds, fifteen rounds, thirteen rounds. But when we came back now there were spectators you know from boys and they were asking guys you all won the match so why so we were saying no we are getting ready for the other match <laughs> actually for him discipline was number one so yeah. i think as he correctly said now it has changed a bit but i think it's good to focus those uh, good uh, values and the main is disciplines once you are disciplined you can do get anything done the word is discipline as a culture culture you can groom them within that culture that's because you give a stick, you can kill a person on the ground. But you have a discipline. There are some rules. Rules apart, but you have your own culture of respecting another player. So that's the culture. So that's the discipline. That's a discipline that we still practice. That's amazing. Even like in this small panel, like you all have been uh, teammates, you all have been coaches to each other and uh, Mr. Jayampati has been the referee also for a few matches for you all. And it's amazing to know that, you know, these connections are still there, but in different levels. But now here we are, uh, all of you all in the same level, being life members of CEHA as well. So now coming back to the Colombo Hockey Association, what can people look forward to in the future in terms of uh, this sport? Yes, I think uh, Colombo Hockey is very focused in developing hockey in Colombo. So, I mean, we don't have any other agenda. So with the life members, with that motive, we are providing our number one uh, motive is to provide best of the best facilities to the players and also to protect our clubs. Now, Colombo HA has about 18 clubs, 8 uh, controlling clubs and the, about 10 affiliated clubs. So with these members and we have a very strong council, uh, so our main focus to answer is basically development of hockey in Colombo because when we do that, being the largest and the oldest, automatically the Sri Lankan hockey will also benefit. All right. So, in terms of development, what's a, uh, is there any sort of support that you need from the people or private, private organizations or the mercantile industry for you all to develop this sport? Of course, one thing to start with, uh, we need to value the name sports. How it benefit people as humans uh, and to be good citizens, as we all spoke about the cultures, disciplines, etc., etc. And how these people will benefit or contribute to organizations, right? We need to value that. We need to understand that. And then to the whole society. So that, that's what sports will bring. Sports will kind of uh, inculcate within a person. Yeah, one of the key challenges we are facing at the moment is the sponsorships. Because the more corporate, I mean, of course, there were a few corporates who supported us. So that is one key challenge. But I'm sure even the forums like this will definitely help uh, uh, to develop and popularize the game of hockey. Definitely. Uh, I'm sure we, Columbia HA, this is a historical moment for us. I'm sure these things will also help yes, us to get more sponsors. Yes. But the players also need some uh, elevation, elevation in terms yeah. of uh, social presence, social visibility. So they, they admire that. It's a recognition, I would say. So their parents also admire that. And after a decade, generally, we are having even the, uh, this Saturday, coming Saturday, we are having Columbia HA. The junior nationals, we became uh, the bronze medal. Actually, the boys team won the bronze medal and the girls team won the fourth place. So we are having almost after 10 years, the junior national colors award ceremony, the same venue. So all these gentlemen as life members will be part of that. So those things will support uh, the players because junior nationals means they have another 10, 15 years ahead in their hockey uh, career. All right. I mean, unfortunately, we are running out of time on our program also, but 
we've been discussing so many other stories prior to the program as well but definitely in the future i hope to do another program as well with all the tournaments and with all the achievements that we have and what we as a country we as individuals we as corporates can do in order to de develop the sports here in sri lanka and especially for hockey as well and with that i would like to thank all of you all for taking the time to join me on the show today and sharing your insight it was my great pleasure also to talking to you all thank you so much thank you thank, thank you very much, much. Thank you Thank so you. much. And that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We'll be back again next week with another youth-related topic or issue. And just in case you can watch us online, you can always uh, catch us uh, um, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com/slash English. I'm Susan Shinali. Stay safe and have a good night.